Welcome to I Lecture Online. Here we have an astronomy question from one of our viewers, and it's actually a really good question. How do we convert the magnitude of a star to the luminosity of a star? Well, it's not that straightforward, but here's how we do that. We have an equation for that. It says that the magnitude of a star, and we're talking about the absolute magnitude of a star, is equal to negative 2.5 times the log base 10 of the ratio of the luminosity to the star of the star to a baseline luminosity where that's defined as 3.0128 times 10 to the 28. Now I'm going to alter the equation just a little bit instead of using negative 2.5 I'm going to use negative 2.512 and I believe that's the correct number this is just the rounded off number but notice that if you take 2.5 to the fifth power you get 97.66 if you take 2.512 to the fifth power you get exactly 100 or very very close to 100 and after all the ratio of the change of five magnitude should equate to the ratio of a luminosity of 100 to 1. So this is really the best number to use, although most equations you find will look like this. It, of course, really doesn't matter that much because you just want to get close to the value. So what we need to do now is, since we're looking for the luminosity, we have to solve this equation for L. So the first thing we're going to do is divide both sides by negative 2.512. So the magnitude divided by negative 2.512 is equal to the log base 10 of the ratio of L divided by L sub naught. So now we need to take the antilog of both sides, which means take what's there and raise it to the, as an exponent to the number 10. So 10 raised to the minus m over 2.512 is equal to 10 raised to the log base 10 of L over L sub naught. Now this will negate the log which means that this will simply be equal to the ratio. That means that 10 raised to the minus, uh, minus M, that should be an M, minus M over 2.512 is equal to L divided by L sub naught. So finally the luminosity of a star equals the baseline luminosity which is given by that number times What's in here, which is 10 raised to the minus the magnitude divided by 2.512. And let me write that a little bit higher up. So there we go. So we can put a box around this. That's the equation we need to convert from magnitude to luminosity. So now we are going to use an example, the sun, which has an absolute magnitude of about 4.83. The reason why it's not quite that important between these two numbers is because most numbers used in astronomy are kind of approximations. We don't know exactly the magnitude of the Sun, we kind of know approximately the magnitude of the Sun. And that's the way it is for most any star in the universe. So, it doesn't matter for exact, we just want to get as close as possible. Alright, so let's calculate the luminosity. L equals the baseline luminosity of 3.0128 times 10 to the 28 watts and we're going to multiply that times 10 raised to the negative magnitude 4.83 divided by 2.512 there we go that should give us the luminosity of the Sun and that's how we find the luminosity of any star so 4.83 divided by 2.512 we make that into a minus and we use that as the exponent of 10 there we go and then we multiply that times 3.0128 e to the 28 equals as so that gives us a luminosity of 3.6 times 10 to the 26 watts and that's the generally accepted value of the luminosity of the Sun. So, now this is how you use the very same process to find the luminosity of any star. All we have to do is plug in the magnitude of the star, divided by 2.512, put a negative in front, make that as the exponent of the number 10, multiply times the base luminosity, and we get the luminosity of any star. And that is how it's done. I'm surprised I haven't done this already. You know, I'm actually surprised as well. That got, doesn't come up as much. <clears throat> Usually they... The other way around? Well, not so much. Usually they, 
they skip this kind of mathematics in most astronomy classes. Only when you get to the more advanced astronomy levels do they begin to ask questions like this. But in a typical first year college astronomy class for general education, they don't get into this kind of detail, so that's usually kind of skipped. So usually when people want ask these kind of questions, they're getting into it a little bit deeper. Okay, that's how it's done. <laughs>